Hey y'all, how are you guys doing? So, I am back with another chit chat girl and disclaimer. I mean, I always do a disclaimer. First of all, I'm still getting over allergies, so my voice may be cracking. It may be an octave or two lower than what it normally is. It is what it is, girl. Um, disclaimer, this is random as hell. This was not planned. Since I'm going to be filming a tutorial, I might as well talk doing it, okay, girl? Multitasking. Um, and I did fix myself a, a drink, a day drink. Now, um, Miss Rhonda... Rhonda is my cousin here in Phoenix, Arizona, y'all. Her name is Miss Delightful72. She has a YouTube channel. I love her. <coughs> she sent me this god awful recipe for another drink. <laughs> and it was mango. What was it, girl? Mango and cranberry with green apple vodka. Now, I tried the girl. I tried it uh, about three days ago and I didn't like it. And you know what it is, it boiled down to, I don't like mango mixed with other stuff. I just like mango straight. But I do like green apple vodka with the cranberry. So I'm not gonna drink all this y'all and I only got a little bit, it's, it's not even, it's not even um, dinner time. So, but it just, you know, it just gets me feeling better. This is some good uh, mystery punch. So y'all. Yeah, talking about a, random, a lot of random stuff um, while doing my hair. I'm actually going to be setting my hair in twists. Finally, no, not twists, braids. Finally going to officially review the Mish line in a proper way. Um, so, yeah, let me unravel. Yeah, real quick while I'm unraveling my hair. I am still amazed. And I, I shouldn't be, but I just feel like... There's so much information out there. There's just really no excuses. I mean, I don't, I, I don't understand. I am still amazed at the fact that there are so many women with natural hair who still don't know how to do their hair. I, what is the problem? I mean, I understand if you're experiencing, <clears throat> I understand if you're experiencing an actual issue with your hair. Maybe you're having, you know, experiencing shedding, breakage, dryness, dryness. Excuse me. But to not have a regimen down. If you've been natural for one plus years, I mean, I have I have women approach me with their hair looking. This is good. This is this is good compared to what? Because my hair is shiny, but that's a sign of health. But their hair is looking like new growth all over. Not to say there's nothing wrong with that, but it looks very. It's dry. Their hair is dry. They're not sure what to do. <clears throat> and I'm like, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, I can understand if you have any issues and if you just went natural, but there's so much information out there. First of all, I find yet again that people are doing way too many things with their hair. Way too many things. They're using way too many products, and I'm guilty of that. Your regimen, your regimen should be simplified, okay, to make it easier. You don't have to do protective styling. I Look, I am not looking forward. I, and I, right now, I'm really not on Facebook that much, so I don't see the foolery. But around this time, as it gets cooler, you'll I will normally see posts from, and again, I get it if this is something that you're traditionally used to doing. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to say from experience, take it for someone who's been natural almost 10 years. You do not have to put your hair in a protective style in order for it to grow. I don't know where that came from, but that was real. I, I think it's kind of died down, but it was really popular, popular, you know, seven or eight years ago to put your hair in a protective style, you know, or to put your hair in a protective style when it's cooler. Um, I do note low manipulation. Okay, low manipulation most of the time. Um, what you saw before, well, you probably didn't see it. I had my hair pulled back and twist in a low bun. That's how I wear my hair. I do not wear my hair out, y'all. First of all, it's too much hair and I get hot. Again, I feel like I say this a lot. So, yeah, you know, just have a very simple regimen. You know, perfect your, try to perfect your styles. You don't have to do perm rods. You don't have to do those god-awful waveformers. You don't have to do, you know, you don't have to do anything that is, uh, you styles that you may feel is difficult. But again, I could understand if you get bored with your hairstyles and the way that you wear your hair or if you're at a length that is you that god awful length to where you have no other choice but to twist it you is it's too short to really put in a ponytail so what do you do with it you can still pin, pin your hair up and twist if you can twist your hair you can still pin it up you guys so i think i will be coming back on cam with a lot more pin up styles and maybe just do a few with my hair still in twist um because it's so funny i get 
I get the most compliments well, I'm just putting my hair up real fast and doing something. So, all right, y'all. So, um, girl, ain't nothing going on in YouTube, but Chocolate Capricorn, you make me sick, girl. She, y'all, I tried not to look at the drama. I tried not to, but I did. I went and watched uh, another, another gentleman's video. What the hell was that? Did y'all hear that? Yeah, I'm paranoid as hell. Um, I went to go look at another gentleman's video and I was confused as hell, girl. But when I tell you, I'm not surprised. I know y'all thinking, what are you, who are you talking about? I'm talking about a YouTuber named Sean Bradley and James Caldwell. And I'm sorry, I looked at, uh, I'm, not, I'm not subscribed to Sean. Um, I used to be, but yeah, we ain't gonna go into why I'm not. And I, but I am subscribed to sub to James. And I saw his video, and when I tell you he snapped, like snap, snap. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't ready for it, but I'm not surprised. Okay, so anyway, girl, moving on from that. Yeah, I didn't even tell y'all. So when I was filming my last chit chat video, it was um, it was storming. Did I tell y'all that? <coughs> oh yeah, cause I was being paranoid. It was storming. But how about actually while I was filming, a supposedly, supposed uh, tornado was in Phoenix. Yeah, there wasn't no damn tornado. That was a large dust. When I tell you these folks flipped out, I saw the Facebook, cause I, I'm friends, Facebook friends with at least five people that, that live in this area, right? And one of them said, oh, my kid is at school and they're, they're uh, they put on an alarm and I said, girl, what in the category one hell are y'all talking about? <laughs> when I tell you that was nothing, I saw videos of it and it just looked like a large dust storm. I was like, child. I told my husband, I said, these folks are going crazy. Apparently a, a tornado, and a tornado touched down in my area. Like literally with uh, five, five miles from me. <clears throat> yeah, in my neighborhood. So I was like, okay. Um, I was not bothered. Let me tell you, I'm from East Texas. I can't tell you how many times my little chubby ass had to get down in the hallway and try to squish my head down because I was fat, fat, you know. Um, so we had tornado drills growing up, you know, in, in East Texas. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I got people who watch me from, from the South. <clears throat> we had tornado drills, okay? It's part of, the, part of the game plan. And it floods out there too. Not just tornado floods. So I was just like, this ain't nothing. This is, and I get it. People are out here are not used to it, but I was like, girl, they were like, what, what did you see it? I said, uh, my blinds were open and I was doing my hair, but I didn't see what you saw. <laughs> I didn't see no tornado, girl. No, it, yeah, whatever. Um, poor, poor Tink Tinks. So anyway, y'all. Heads up, I did let y'all know I posted a couple of days ago that we will be doing Vlogmas. Now, I have no, hold on, let me, I can take a drink after that. Mmm, this is good. Now, you could also, look, I'm dripping everywhere. You could also make something called apple, I saw a recipe, Rhonda, if you want to do this, there's a recipe called apple pie. I don't want, I don't know, no, I just want, mm, mm yeah. So, anyway. We will be doing Vlogmas, and <clears throat> I want this to be a little bit more organized uh, <laughs> than last year. The year before, it was good. I had actual stuff. I mean, I had stuff kind of sort of planned for last year, but girl, no, the year before, I didn't do last year. I did it two years in a row, and when I tell you, it's a lot of work. So those of you who don't know, Vlogmas is, happens in, in December, and it's basically where vloggers post a vlogging video every day up until Christmas in preparation for the holidays, basically. I love this time of the year, y'all. I really just coming up. Seriously, we about to be in October. Like, can y'all believe this? Can you believe it? We about to be in October. And these kids gonna be coming by your, your door, ringing on your doornail, getting on your damn nerves, asking for candy. It's here. It is coming. Um, this will be the first year when I'm not making JB's Halloween costume. I'm kind of, girl, I'm kind of glad. And I get out, I got off the hook. So anyway, y'all, let's talk about something else. All right, so, um, 
what did I have down in my notes, y'all? All right, so what I'm watching on TV. So I told y'all last time I was watching Fear of the Walking Dead, which this season was way better in my opinion. I really do like Morgan and um, the uh, Two-Face man. <laughs> Dwight, Two-Face. Dwight on there. I really do like that. I, I like, I think I like Fear of the Walking Dead more so than I like The Walking Dead right now. Um, cause I didn't even watch the past few seasons of, of The Walking Dead. <coughs> One, because I was getting scared. But look, girl, I'm fit to be tied. I was so upset. You know, remember the show I was telling you about on Netflix called The OA? And it's the letter OA. That weird ass, it, it's just weird as hell. One of the weirdest yet fascinating shows that I've ever seen. And they decided to cancel season three. I'm like, what? Just when I was getting over the octopus filling up the lady, I was getting past that part. <laughs> it's weird. Oh yeah, it is weird. It's interesting, but you just gotta get through it. You gotta get through it. Now y'all, I know some of y'all told me, I know I had, cause I've been asking for recommendations of what, what to watch. And I know some of y'all suggested 3%. I can't do it. And let me tell you what 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 episode I'm on. They have gotten past where, oh, I sound country. They've gotten past to where they can get the food once they do the uno, dos, or I, I can't, well, I don't, I don't speak Portuguese. Where they're basically learning the code and now they're outside. I, I'm still not into it. I can't, I'm not feeling it. It's not drawing me. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, it doesn't get better. There's nothing, honestly, there's nothing that's gonna, that can make me, at this point, want to continue watching it. So I'm not watching it anymore. Sorry, y'all. Not doing Sense8 anymore because it's just way too sexual. Way too sexual. Um, and yeah, that's, I, I yeah. No, girl. Um, Bloodline is the shit knit. If you want to look, if, if you all about petty, not petty, drama, I mean, it has everything you can think of wrapped up in a, in a, a series. It's called Bloodline, and it is on Netflix. And it has Sissy, Sissy Spacek, um, some other people who are really not that popular. Uh, at least I, I haven't really seen them in anything. Actually, you know what I watch? What was it called? Y'all, what was it called? Why am I clapping my thighs? Let me look it up. Hold on. It has the girl that plays in this is in another series that I saw with the actress from Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. That's my favorite, one of my favorite shows, y'all. I love me some 90s movies. Let me look her up. Um, Christina Applegate. Okay, so Christina Applegate plays in this show. What is it called? Dead to Me. Dead to Me. Look up Dead to Me. It is not what you think at all. I, that was another one that was a little like, I don't know about this, but it is good. Dead to me on Netflix is really good. Absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, girl, the OA is gone, 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 gone. Waiting for the dark to come back so I can see that fine. <laughs> Y'all know how I like me an older man, but, but, but no, look, I'm grown. So I can like me someone who's fine and, and I'm almost dying. I can, I can. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm almost 40 years old, okay? So, I have a little celebrity crush on one of the actors because I uh, saw how fit to me. Look, it's not, you can't just be not any type of old person. You know what I mean? I like an older man who clearly has kept himself up and together. Um, and this guy has. He's 50-something years old. He's a German German actor. Well, the movies, the series is German based, excuse me. I'm referring to the series called Dark on Netflix. And so that's coming back, I'm, I'm assuming sometime soon. I'm hoping it is, but mm, girl, I, I can't wait. <laughs> Y'all, y'all know, I'm so crazy. So look, that kind of reminds me, I know I'm getting off, kind of off subject. Y'all know who I think is the epitome of a, a, um, older gentleman, older handsome gentleman who's really taking care of himself. And I need to see how old he is before I, I go in. Hold on, y'all. All right, y'all. So 
Does anyone watch live PD? Y'all, I can tell we getting old because we watch it. <laughs> so live PD is very similar to um, cops, but it's like cops with different type of angles and different perspectives. And they um, shoot out <coughs> and out here actually, they do uh, Tucson, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, girls, South Carolina, I can tell before they even open up their mouth. I can tell when they're in South Carolina. Those people, the black people out in South Carolina have a different look about them. And I think it's because with other, a group of Magullah people, they didn't mix with any other with any other races. They really stick to their own. Different type of people there look very much like West Africans. They, they kept that uh, as far as facial appearances. But anyway, South Carolina, some place like Louisiana, child, but look. But anyway, back to the old and fine, Sergeant Sticks Larkin. Sean Larkin. I think he's from Oklahoma. When I tell you that is a handsome, older gentleman, I think that he's gonna be pushing, he's in his mid 40s. He's very fit. Um, he's in his mid 40s. He's very fit. He's physically fit. And it was so funny because um, we were watching it a couple of months ago. We watch it all the time now. But a couple of months ago, we were watching it. And I was telling my husband, like, that man is so good looking. And my husband, like, that old looking man? Because he, he has allowed his hair. He doesn't dye color his hair. His hair is gray, all grayed out. And so my husband, like, that old looking man? I said, uh, excuse me. But as a female who is still in her fertile stages, that man would be the perfect mate. <laughs> Basically, he's fine. Yes, he's physically fit. He's very good looking. So anyway, y'all, back to Netflix. Girl, I said all that. Just running in circles. Why didn't y'all tell me? Um, I watched the season finale of Glitch. Glitch is a Australian-based show. First season was the bomb. Second season was amazing. This season was good too. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna give me spoilers, but girl, that was one scene where I was like, blasphemy! All y'all, all y'all need to read the Old Testament, and the, and you need to read uh, the Book of Corinthians. But no, I try to be open, you guys. I really do. There was one part of uh, one scene where one of the awakening women it basically talks it basically deals with <coughs> a group of people who they're not zombies but they come back to life and they come back in their former self if they died in 1984 they think it's still 1984 they don't realize that this actually modern day is 2019 they're not mummified they still have their they're basically their cells are rejuvenated so there was one scene in season three where uh the woman was like one of the back to life women was like well so basically we're like jesus and he responded he said no jesus was like you i said child blasphemy <laughs> I, almost, I almost turned that down to me. <laughs> but i endured i endured i watched it let me go ahead i hate to send or not to send or whatever I hate to send not to send her girl <laughs> Check that out though. Check it out. Look, some of y'all, some of y'all old school saints can be like, "Girl, no, we ain't gonna do that." So y'all, anyway. Um, <clears throat> then I watch. You know what? There are some movies. I, I'm a movie watcher, you guys. I watch a lot of movies. Um, I'm a. I, I watch. I don't really watch TV as much as I used to, but the first thing I learned how to read, my mom, my mama will always tell me, she will always joke about it. The first thing I learned how to read was a TV guy. And as we were growing up, my father would make us read the opening credits and the ending credits of movies. So I have watched a lot of different movies. Um, when I was in, uh, I was a strange child. When I was younger, I would watch old movies. I mean, movies from the 20s, 30s, 50s. I love, you know, people talk about, yo, have you ever seen um, Imitation of Life? I say, yes, but have you seen the original Imitation of Life? Oh yes, I'm one of those. I look at the originals, okay? Um, I will look at a, horror, a known horror movie here and then look up like Ring, which is really Ringu. 
I've seen all those. Hell, sometimes I look at it in, in the language and I don't even do the closed cap because I'm crazy like that. I just That's just how passionate, passionate I am about movies. But there are certain movies that just are so emotional and just hit a nerve, basically a trigger to where, basically a trigger to where I won't watch it again. There's a couple of movies <coughs> like that for me. American X is one. I'll just name off a few. <clears throat> My voice, y'all. American X, Hotel Rwanda. I cannot watch that ever again. They did with the genocide between the Hutus and Tutsis. Out in, um, Africa. Um, Hotel Rwanda. I can never watch again. Um, the Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Can never watch again. I some of the Quentin Tarantino movies are so graphic. I don't watch. I wouldn't watch again. Twelve Years a Slave. Can't do it. But one that wasn't necessarily graphic, but was just so <clears throat> emotional for me was Intercellular with Matthew McConaughey and Hathaway, Matt Damon. You know, all it had a cast. I think John. I forgot his name. Last name. Last name is with an L. Um. So it was such a overwhelming, emotional movie that I, I was like, I'm gonna watch this. This is it. It's good, very good movie, a amazing movie. Okay, I'm like, I'm, I can't watch this again. Y'all, I watched it again this past weekend. First of all, I'm not that big of a fan of Matthew McConaughey, and the the reason for it, you're gonna laugh at me. Matthew McConaughey is actually from my hometown. You guys, he's from. Um, he wasn't born there, but he was raised partially in Longview, Texas. Um, and I know people who know Matt is what they used to call him, Matt. He even spoke briefly about Longview High School last year because my high school actually went to state and won. Football is very serious in East Texas. They don't play in Texas in general. Football is serious. Y'all know this. So anyway, but the reason why I always side-eyed Matthew McConaughey, because we know he has his Southern accent. But he, it, it's like, can you not, you really have to talk like that all the time? Every damn time you hear him sounds like he's about to drink out of a damn mayonnaise glass. I mean, I shouldn't talk because I got, but still, I'm like, and that I think part of his persona is he plays up to, he's an amazing actor. I'm not going to, I'm not going to discredit him from that. But that, I think he plays on that accent, which I, I don't, I get it. Hell, sometimes I do it too if I need something, <laughs> if I need something for someone. I'm like, how can you help me with that? But he just does it all the damn time. I'm like, come on. So I'm seeing him in Intercellular, right? Um, amazing movie. If you have not seen it, if you're into sci-fi movies, <clears throat> check it out. It's really good. But, you know, I was watching it, you guys, and one part of the scene, it came out in 2013. And one part of the scene, Matt Damon's character basically stated he plays an astronaut. He basically asks, you know, uh, Matthew McConaughey character, Cooper, he's basically dying in this scene. Cooper is dying, okay? He asks him, what do you see? Do you see your children? Statistics shows or studies show that when you're dying, you see your children. A lot of people think that you, it, it varies for a lot of people, but a lot of people think that your life flashes up, uh, in front of you. But as someone who has gone through a, a state of actually dying, Back in 2014, I actually have a story time video of this. <coughs> I was sick, <clears throat> kind of like I am now, but it was cooler and it turned into an upper respiratory infection. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't speak. I'm not going to say a lot about it because, again, I have a story time. Basically, I was having an asthma attack for 15 minutes straight. Um, I didn't want to disturb my husband. I didn't want to disturb my, my baby. JB was just a year old then. He was just a baby. I didn't want to disturb them. So I was an idiot and drove myself to the hospital. That was the biggest mistake. I almost died. The hospital was only seven or eight minutes away. But that was that was so stupid. Uh, to the point the ER doctor was very upset when she found out I drove, drove myself there. But what had happened is that by the time I got into the ER, right, um my breath was getting shorter and shorter. And it literally feels like someone is pouring sand down your throat and it's, it's rising up and you're, you're losing. I mean, that's the only thing I could, you know, compare it to. So, <coughs> excuse me, you guys. 
Um, I get out, I park, I get to the hospital, right? I get it to the ER. I am literally 20 feet away, but it's cold. And with the cold air coming in, I can't breathe. So I call, I call the ambulance. I call 911, excuse me, outside of the hospital. And they answer and I'm literally like, I'm having, I'm just, I'm, so I try to stay on long enough and I couldn't even get it out. I couldn't even get it out. I couldn't even tell her. I told her I was at the, at the hospital, but I couldn't get out where I was at. <clears throat> long story short, girl, I started crying. I knew that th this was it. I and then I start. I saw flashes of my child. I start. I'm gonna try harder to cry. I start. I saw flashes of him being born. I saw flashes of him as a baby. I just saw just different stages of his life. He, his little life. He only been alive for a year you know he's only he's only a year old right so i was but it but actually that is what calmed me down and that is what I, I honestly think that is what saved my life is the will to to you know live for my child so i calmed down caught my breath and what it felt like forever but finally um nurses ran out with a wheelchair they saw me barely leaning up i was halfway <laughs> like a drunk person i was leaning up like this on the car i don't know why i did that so they woke me in and at this point i could not breathe and i, I remember it's funny how you remember certain things i remember the nurse behind me saying she sounds like a train she literally sounds like a train that's how much fluid and just it was so hard but they thought i had pneumonia yeah i was in icu for three days after that but you know <sighs> The overall message of this movie is you think it's about time travel and dimensions, dimensions, excuse me, but it really talks about the power of love and how honestly, and I really do feel this way, you know, after watching this, I, I thought about it, you know, and I think about stuff like this, you guys, I, I think about serious topics every now and then I can be serious. And I thought about it, you know, I think that love is the most, it's not even an emotional, it's not an emotion. It is an emotional feeling, but it's more than that. Love is the strongest force out there. Whether it be love for a spouse, a wife, husband, significant other, love for a child. It is the most powerful. Because if you think about it, people have done the craziest things for love. People have killed people for love. People have given birth for love. You know, life and death for love. They've done the craziest thing and the most beautiful things um for love and i i honestly do feel like um when it comes to even illnesses and uh depression to a certain degree i am not going to knock down clinical depression that is due to um chemistry you know but at the end of the day i really do think that if more people felt love if more people um reached out to their quote-unquote loved ones <coughs> And if you actually hear those words, I love you, it does something to you. You know what I mean? It can mean a lot to a person. It can mean a lot, a lot to a, comp a complete stranger to show love, to show, an, and that can be an act of kindness, you know, a random act of kindness. So yeah, I love the movie. I say, I say, I love the movie. I really did. I, I was okay watching it. You know, I was boohooing in the middle of it, but I was okay. We're gonna talk a little bit about celebrity stuff. So I know I am late, girl, and I really ain't gonna talk about a lot about this, but I just think it's absolutely crazy. Y'all friends, Malik Yoba, uh, Malik Yoba Dabba Doo, y'all know who I'm talking about, the um, actor from um, uh, Undercover, New York Undercover, and from Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married and Why Did I Get Married too? child so he had revealed a couple of weeks ago that he has an attraction to transgender women okay cool moving on but why apparently in this other interview i don't know if it was him or someone else that he brought with him basically said that doctors assign gender let me tell you something i am not co-signing this bullshit Doctors do not assign gender. Now, there are situations to where if a child is born intersex or uh, unfortunately there were some, some cases a while back and I, I think it's still going on today if a child was born with both genders that the doctor would choose. And that's an effed up type of way. I remember hearing a case <coughs> where a individual went to the doctor, had a scan and come to find out he had ovaries. 
he had no idea he, he had ovaries and he had no idea so yeah in those cases they do choose but every day they don't just you know wake up and say oh jb we're gonna make you a boy today no the hell that doesn't <laughs> so apparently child he got upset and walked out of the interview I didn't watch it. Y'all, he is a mess. So, what, what I'm hearing is that there are these sexual allegations for underage children that is going on. And that's one of the reasons why he came out and said that he had this attraction toward transsexuals. So, I would be interested to see how that is going to play out. You know, y'all, everything, what is done in the dark will come to the light, like they say. You know what I mean? So, child. Um, but speaking of children, y'all. I was so upset to hear this case out of whack ass Florida. Of course it's Florida. Sorry if you live in Florida. I'm sorry if you're from Florida. I'm just so sorry. This police officer arrested two six year olds. Twice I looked at two videos. I couldn't even get through it because it's so disturbing. Like what about a six-year-old can you not control and you feel the need to arrest and it was a little boy and a little girl that is so heartbreaking to me those children are going to be forever traumatized can you imagine if someone calls you and told you that your child has your six-year-old child was arrested at school well when i understand the little boy was actually processed the little boy was actually handcuffed. I'm getting emotional because it's, it's upsetting. The little boy was actually processed, meaning he was handcuffed, photographed. Are you out of your damn mind? Like these people have lost common sense altogether. And what makes it even more disheartening is that it was a brother, a black police officer that arrested these two young black children. He should not, if you cannot handle children, six year olds, you shouldn't be a damn police officer. That is the most asinine story I've ever read. That, those parents should sue the hell out of that police department and school because if they are under the age of 12, the parents are, should, are supposed to be called. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't know why the little boy, the little boy was, was um, arrested for a separate incident, but I believe the little girl, I believe that she um, kicked, verbally assaulted, not very physically assaulted the teacher. Even then, those children are, traumatized could you imagine i mean i've seen videos of kids who are absolutely horrible bad and you know they've done something that's bad and they were handcuffed and arrested i didn't even agree with that because they're doing it to scare them i don't agree with that i'm sorry there's other ways to go about <clears throat> you shouldn't have to scare someone into behaving correctly that's horrible that is such a failure Oh my God, I don't know. Uh, girl, somebody asked me be. <laughs> you can't do that. But that's the that's the mama bear in me. It's so I, I'm, I'm kicking everybody's asses. Everybody, everybody line up. I'm serving everybody an ass whooping. That's the mama bear in me. You can't do that. But you can knock them on the books as far as getting a lawyer. No one should be arresting a child. I got glasses that are six years old. <laughs> are you kidding me? y'all anyway so that is enough y'all i getting sidetracked thank y'all for watching take care bye